Not to be outdone by Abraham Lincoln, General Butler decides to suspend free speech. Hello and welcome to Civil War in Hindsight. I'm Lieutenant Tommy. With me, as always, is Prospector Johnny. And, and well, Johnny, uh, if you thought Butler was a little, well, dictatorish last week with his Lady of the Night order. Yes. Well, this week it's going to open up on the 16th of May with him suspending publications of New Orleans B and New Orleans Delta papers after federal troops occupy those publication offices and then promptly shut them down for some oh. sympathies. So he's going to go ahead and censor uh, the press and get rid of free speech in that yep. area. Yeah, it's just doing that. Oh well, good. That's uh, <laughs> where so to go. Follow, to follow, you know, he'll when we recombine and everything, he'll fit right in. Fit right in. We're fit right uh, in. Lincoln, with, with all Lincoln all will love Lincoln's, him. Lincoln's going to love. Him. I imagine Butler's going to be you know promoted to command of the entire union army soon enough with that uh, i mean uh, like he's this. gotta be right he's uh <laughs> he's doing everything lincoln wants to do yeah, everything lincoln wants to do so out in virginia johnny general mcclellan uh, has made his ho- headquarters in white house not to be confused with with that white house that you're thinking of this is white it's... house that the lee family uh has owned oh. and uh, and so now he's taking over Wait, property uh, that was that Bobby Lee? Yeah, yeah, Bobby Lee, that the okay. Bobby Lee's family had owned. Uh, so now he's taking it, putting his headquarters in former Bobby Lee's property. Uh, so All right, let's go. go. It's, it's <laughs> near the Pamunkey River uh, in, in Virginia. Okay. Uh, so Trader they've President, taken that, and that's that's our headquarters that's, in Virginia now? Head, All of Virginia, or just kind just, of that? Just McClellan's headquarters for his his, uh, his, his uh, Okay. His brilliant campaign where he has... He's, he's moved on that. How long did it take him to get that? Yeah, it's been six a months. It's been it's been a couple months of him uh, with a massive army doing a doing whole nothing. lot of nothing. Yeah, we got Yorktown though. I mean, eventually, after not ever actually having to do a battle. Yeah, he should be even. in Florida by now. Yeah, he should uh, be. By the way, um, <laughs> or, <laughs> like or at least is... in Richmond. God, McClellan, just get bent, bud. Uh, and Trader President Davis writes to his wife in regards to their uh, victory here last week at Drury's Bluff, where they. Uh-huh. Uh, the, the cannons, the Confederate cannons, happened to be at a higher elevation than the Union gunboats could shoot at. Yeah. Right. So of this Makes victory, hit. yeah, he writes his wife, and I quote, The panic here has subsided. With an increasing confidence, there has arisen a desire to see the city destroyed rather than surrendered. Hmm. Not, hey, we had a big victory, we're going to win. But, hey, we had a victory, we're going to win. Uh, but it's not going to be permanent. Yeah. So let's destroy the city as opposed to surrender the city. So they're talking about burning their own city to the ground, essentially. Yeah, is again, that what we're doing. Yeah, we've already. Yeah, is that just, why is a the new a, theme of the Confederacy just burn why? It. Is, so we're know. all right. So we're gonna we're gonna fight this whole ass war. We're gonna win. We're gonna get our country uh, resolidified, but half of it's just going to be ash. Or on the Confederate side, like we won, yay! But. Half of our own country's ash because we burned it ourselves, and now yeah. we have to rebuild it. Like I don't see the end game here being positive on either side, but okay. Uh, maybe it's also just that time where they need to like burn their fields and stuff to like you know enrich the soil. Maybe, maybe it's just happenstance that this coincided at the right maybe. time. Maybe it could be it. Could be it. On the 17th year of May, Johnny, the situation around Corinth, Mississippi, has developed into a siege uh, with the Union digging rifle lines in front of the entire enemy position, basically like Tennessee River all the way down through Corinth. Just big yeah. old massive line of rifle pits. And so now we're just going to actually wait it out here again. I, too. I guess we're just going to ride it out here just like we did in Yorktown. Yep. Just keep on waiting. Uh, U.S. Grant has been mostly relegated uh, to an uh, observer position uh, despite his suggestions to move on to the city. As his scouts have reported, the Confederate numbers are far fewer than the 70,000 that Halleck thinks is there. Why? Uh, Why? Why and in we, fact, Johnny, we're handcuffing last... Grant here is what you're telling. Like he's yeah, yeah. Halleck is Halleck has put Grant in second in command. <sighs> With no real authority, because Halleck is making all the general commands. Right, Grant yeah, has no so he's field, just Yeah, Grant has no field command. Um, uh, there's Pope up in the, up in the north, uh, is, who's got field command. There's Sherman. Uh, a bunch of people have field commands, but Grant has absolutely no field command. He's been doing well for us, right? Yeah, like, he has been. We like Grant. We do he's, like Grant. 
And Grant's His like, initials are U.S. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Grant Grant goes up to Halleck and says, Look, "Lean on him, right? I know you think that the Confederates in Corinth have seventy thousand men. Uh, my scouts say that's not true, and a lot of the numbers that you are seeing are actually like non-combatant positions. Uh, so, um, like, we can go ahead and move. We double so, the force. Uh, non-combatant like, position? You mean part of like uh, like uh, cooks and cooks and, and, and stuff? And, yeah, 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 and, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. Or, uh, me, ordnance. You know, right? People like not not actually people with not not front line, uh, not back line, not shooty, shooty bang bangs. folks, nothing yeah. like that. It's just a bunch of wait staff. Uh, yeah, good good way to good good way to describe that one there, Shotty. <laughs> Uh, Grant's I mean, Morales. No offense, Lieutenant. Uh, yeah, no, you're fine. I'm good. Hey, I'm good with this. I like playing with guns. <laughs> you're in a good spot. Like, you're safe. Yeah, I don't have to. I'm safe. I get to play with guns, and I don't have to, like, you know, die unless a, unless an ordinance department goes up, which is entirely possible. I mean, we that are would be a good spot to attack. Mixing a ton of gunpowder with some children, making those bullets for us. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, they got the happen. tiny hands. They can. Yeah, but it hasn't happened yet. Hasn't happened yet. What are the odds? There's no Pretty way at none, all I I don't in this war ever. that any arsenal is ever going to explode due to happenstance or, you know, bad work no. ethic. No, I mean, there's not been any sort of uh, history of uh, munitions just suddenly going off going and up. killing people. Nope. Um, never never's going to happen. It, the war didn't start that way, certainly. It <laughs> certainly didn't. Anyways, Johnny, Grant's morale is so low at this point that he has requested to be transferred out of Halleck's commands, and that request has been denied until at least this campaign is over. So Halleck has basically Lincoln's said, just... yeah, you're you're sitting on the sidelines, and that's about now, it. Now, did he ask, is Grant asking Lincoln for a reassignment, or did he have to ask? Well, he has to ask Halleck. Halleck. Yeah, <laughs> he's got to ask his immediate uh, supervisor yeah. uh, for, for that. And yes. he's like, nah, no, no, I like having you do nothing. I like having you do nothing, yep. Uh, uh, General McDowell trip. out in Virginia is going to be ordered to move his forces towards Richmond to aid McClellan there because McClellan can't stop bitching about not having enough troops, even though he still has double the number of troops that the Confederates can feel. But okay, yeah, it's fine, okay. whatever. And again, I, I, we, we need to find out, and I guess eventually we might if he makes a move, but I'm curious about the number of troops he wants to <coughs> feel good about doing something. Well, Johnny, it's not triple because he's had triple not the number triple. and it's still yeah, not, not that. that. So Maybe quadruple. Maybe quadruple. Who knows? On May 18th, General Jackson, the Confederate Dirty Dirty General Stonewall Jackson, he has been making progress in the Shenandoah Valley as Union mm. forces are going to pull back towards the Western Valley to consolidate troops as Union General Banks is unsure what the hell Jackson is doing and where he's ultimately planning to move. So he's like, all right, Banks is like, all right, all my outlining troops, we're going to consolidate towards uh, towards a centralized point so at least I can have all my troops in mass to face Jackson. And this is because uh, he just – Jackson's just unpredictable. That's what's going on well, here. Well, Jackson's He's, whole goal here – now, remember, Jackson's whole goal here is to ensure that no troops from Winchester are right. able to aid McClellan to, in Richmond. So yeah. Jackson is only here to disrupt the Union forces from, like, consolidating troops towards Richmond. So mm -hmm. mission accomplished, Jackson. You're doing a good job so far, although I wish you weren't. Uh, it's on main, he has a dope nickname. Does does have a dope nickname. The dope nickname that he got because he murdered half of his troops. Well, not well, murdered, what are you gonna do? He let them get murdered, I guess. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's it's a difference, it's but only kinda. Only kinda. <laughs> 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 On May 19th, Trader President Davis writes his wife again, saying that, and I quote, We are uncertain of everything except that a battle must be near at hand. Yup. Like, you've got Richmond right there about where did he get... Mm -hmm. He's got Richmond and Corinth, like, besieged almost, basically. So, yeah. at some point, something's got to give somewhere. Yeah. The, it, the, Either yeah, kinda, yeah, it's fight coming to take it here. over, or we have to fight to break out, one of the two. Something's going to... Something's got to give, and we're going to, you know... At the same time, Lincoln is going to publicly denounce Major General David Hunter's Emancipation Proclamation that he gave uh, what? last week, uh, what? which is now the he second He should have backed time. it up and just made it solid. Like, when this yeah. guy, uh, this is, what are you doing, Lincoln? This is now the you're second a, time that you're Lincoln— You're a dictator. Do what you want. Yeah, this is the second time that Lincoln has had to overrule an Tommy? Emancipation Proclamation given by one of his generals. Second I'm starting time. to think he does not want— 
Emancipation. In Emancipation Proclamation. Yeah, well, I I don't know what his end goal here or is. Or maybe, uh, maybe he has all of his uh, writers working on an Emancipation Pro- Proclamation. And he and wants his, the credit for it? Like, he just wants it to be so much better or something. Like, it, it's it like, no, that. no, 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 we got to do it right, and I need the credit for it. Yeah, it could, it That's could how he that. sounds, by the way. Uh, That's exactly how he sounds, yeah. I, I think he has a little bit higher voice than that. It's more like no, <laughs> no. It's a little bit like a, like a almost like a Sean Connery type thing. But oh, is that, accent, is that you know? That what I mean? Yeah, that's what it is. Uh, <laughs> and skirmishing continues in Virginia and Mississippi, including another victory by Pope, General Pope at Farmington. This is like his third time he's taken over the city of Farmington, and Halleck has told him, "Nope, you got to go back to your original positions." So, Why? Good Why? on Pope. I don't know. Good on Pope for making progress, but bad on. On Halleck for just and so all okay of, so all, all right so he goes process. and bang 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 goes into this city and takes over the city whatever and then, and then Halleck bang, says bang, you gotta go back and then all did all the people that retreated they're like oh my home's free now yeah that's and exactly. then it came again and they're like oh no it's back and they're like, oh my home's free now <laughs> like yeah and so exactly. it's just that cycle yep, good that's, god that's like exactly yep you are one hundred percent correct there Johnny that's exactly what's going on just make it so their homes aren't free right <laughs> and then they can come back. <laughs> Or at least maybe burn the homes before you go back. Something. On May 20th. Also, and, and before they decide to burn the homes themselves. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, there is that. Because that's coming. That's Pro- coming. Two weeks. <laughs> I, I expect to hear about it. On May 20th, President Lincoln will sign into law the Homestead Act, giving a free plot of 160 acres to actual settlers on land in public domain in the territories that would occupy and improve the land for five years. So basically, anybody who wants to move out to... Nevada Territory or Oklahoma Territory or, uh, well, not really Oklahoma because I guess that's part of the dirty, dirty south at this point. But, you know, like, uh, uh, what's that? Oregon. That's the one. Kind of, Oregon. Yeah, the, kind of like that that Plains Western area. The, yeah, you want to go up to the northwest? Uh, you can get 160, 160 acres. Free acres of land as long as you settle it and improve the land, a.k.a. build a farm uh, and be there for five years at yours. Uh, or start so, logging right yeah logging in, in the yeah. northwest anything, just start yeah. cutting down some trees and you'll give me 160 acres it's yours anything to prove the land now what I am i you- doing tommy why am i looking for gold yeah you should do that get, get yourself some free land and i tell you this because in the midst of a civil war the north is so full of supplies that we can like <laughs> take our manpower and say go settle a land and get a free 160 acres here's some money because <laughs> we have so much because we're not burning it to the ground do you yeah, understand right. this confederacy we're not right burning all of our supplies to the ground uh and also on the 20th here johnny stonewall jackson is going to move to new market and then he's going to cross the Masson newton mountain uh to luray uh where he is going to meet up with richard yule where they're going to combine their forces giving jackson 48 cannons and sixteen thousand men uh, between the two armies, which is a substantial force now here okay. in the Shenandoah Valley. Let's uh, go. Well over double what anything that Banks has to put in the field. On the 21st. This is a full speed ahead type deal, right? Like, yeah, but not here we go. go, Johnny. He's a bad guy. Stonewall Jackson, bad guy. We don't want him oh. to his forces. Not he's, but he's got to be thinking that, right? He's thinking that, yeah. He's thinking here we go, yeah. So this is bad news. Bad news is for us. what you're telling me. On the 21st, Jackson and Banks continue to dance around each other uh, with more minor skirmishing going on in front of Corinth. So uh, Jackson has now combined his forces. He's starting to try to – his goal here is to capture Banks' entire force. It doesn't quite happen uh, that way for him. Then again uh, – So he's not even – He's doing the land thing though too, right? This is this is um, capturing land, capturing or flag, capturing he, land, yeah, all that fun yeah, stuff. Yeah, but yeah, but also mostly, he wants to capture an army. <laughs> he wants to try to capture the entire army. Yeah. Okay, and then what? Starve them to death with your lack of resources? Is that his? Uh, I think yeah. I think that's goal? The, I think yeah. I think that's his goal there. Um, uh, Lincoln is also going to write McClellan on the twenty first, saying that uh, he has sent McDowell uh, to aid him, and, and so he can stop calling for reinforcements. Uh, because, uh, you know, he doesn't him. need him. His army already doubles everything else in the field, but here's McDowell's 20,000 troops to go along with yours, so shut up for two seconds and, like, you know, do something. Could Attack you, Richmond. Which, yes. by the way, Richmond itself, like, hardly any troops there right now, so time to go, but not moving. In this, uh, this war should be over. It should be. Uh, and this minor, if not for McClellan being if not for appointed McClellan by being... who, who appointed him, was that Lincoln? That was Lincoln. What a dictator! 
Yeah, what a dictator is right, Johnny. Uh, and this minor, uneventful week is going to come to an end on the 22nd of May with, well, more minor skirmishing around Corinth and Pope again taking Farmington and Pope again being told he has to pull back from uh, Farmington. I don't... And additionally, uh, uh, Stonewall Jackson is moving towards Front Royal uh, with McClellan finally moving into positions along the Chickamahami River uh, in, uh, in Virginia right by... Uh, right there by uh, uh, Richmond, so maybe he'll move. So next he's starting week? to move some, but he started. He, uh, this was just him moving troops. He's meandering not, towards. Yeah, he's meandering yeah, yeah, yeah. towards Richmond. So and maybe. then Stonewall Jackson is going ahead and and making taking a shit. charge. And yeah, nah, I shit. don't like the way this is going, Lieutenant Tommy. Yeah, we'll see what happens next week. But I think the the blue victory streak is about ready to come to an end. That's it for this week in Civil War in Hindsight. If you enjoy Civil War in Hindsight, check out Historic Hindsight. We talk about all kinds of fun things like uh, a chicken war slash tax on European chicken exports and uh, and a, a 10 cent beer night that got a little out of hand. Who would have saw that coming?